My name is Dr. Melvin Sani. I am working as an assistant professor in Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Rama University. So, today our discussion about the topic is cardiac glycosides. So, from the name itself, this is glycosides now. From itself, we can expect that there is a sugar group in the drugs. Okay. From uh, there are some examples for cardiac glycosides are main drugs are digoxin is there, digitoxin, oabain. So digoxin, digitoxin, oabain are the main drugs comes under the cardiac glycosides. Among those, digitoxin and oabain is not well uh, used currently. The main drug now is used for used under the cardiac glycosides is digoxin. So, from the, uh, the digoxin is mainly indicated for the use of uh, for the patients with congestive congestive heart failure and arrhythmia. These are the two conditions where these cardiac glycosides are mainly used. Okay, and uh, when we uh, first of all before going to uh, much detail about digoxin, we can get a uh, brief introduction about what is congestive heart failure. Even though digoxin is not the uh, first line drug for congestive heart failure, it is used in the treatment of congestive heart failure patients with cardiomegaly, cardiomegaly that means enlargement of heart, enlargement of heart and those patients with lower ejection fraction. These are the two conditions where the uh, digoxin is mainly used for congestive heart failure patients, one with enlargement of heart of heart or cardiomegaly and lower ejection fraction where uh, the ability of or the performance of heart uh, to pump blood for the metabolic needs of metabolic needs of our body. Start discussing about congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure mainly can occur from one uh, due to two uh, cases. One is through by the systolic dysfunction. Systolic dysfunction is there and diastolic dysfunction is there. Systolic dysfunction is mainly depends upon the depolarization of heart that is the uh, absorption of heart. Sorry, the contraction. Systolic dysfunction is mainly due to the problem in the contraction of heart that is what uh, that is mainly due to myocardial infractions. Our myocardial cells have to be healthy in order to push the complete blood from the atrium to the ventricles. So if in the myocardial infraction disease our my myocytes get damaged and due to uh, the impairment of myocardial due to by the myocardial infraction the heart couldn't able to pump or couldn't able to perform as its normal condition. So systolic dysfunction is mainly due to the myocardial infraction. Next one is diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction is mainly happening to the prolonged due to one reason. First one reason is prolonged hypertension first point. For uh, patients with chronic hypertension, they can able to get the diastolic dysfunction and this diastolic dysfunction further will lead to congestive heart failure. Then second point is stiffening of stiffening of heart ventricles. When the myocytes or uh, cells in the ventricles get stiffened, their ability to contract will decrease. So these are the two dysfunctions that may lead to congestive heart failure. So now we can go to the topic or we can elaborate about the functions of digoxin, what they does to our body, what is their functions and everything. So our drug under this cardiac glycosides is digoxin. From the name itself we can assume that digoxin is having a glycoside linkage. So a general structure of digoxin. So from the structure in implicates, this is the, uh, as I have already discussed that it is having a glycosidic linkage, that is a glucose is linked to this a glycone part. Uh, this digoxin is consisting of, first one is a sugar part or glycone part is present. 
sugar part sugar part is present in their nucleus that is glycon part and non sugar part is present that is a glycon part is present so in this structure this is the sugar part which is present in the digoxin and this is the steroidal nucleus this is the a glycon part of the digoxin and this is the unsaturated okay and unsaturated lactone ring is present so this is the three parts of this digoxin first it containing a sugar moiety is there then a steroidal part is there steroidal part is the a glycon part which is responsible for the pharmacological activity of the drug pharmacological activity of the drug then unsaturated lactone ring is there what for this sugar moiety means it will give the uh, it will makes the drug become more soluble and it also uh, improve the fixation of drug in the myocytes cardiac myocytes so this is the general introduction about the digoxin what is this uh, their main mechanism is this will this digoxin will increase the force of force of contraction of heart so in uh, congestive heart failure condition heart is unable to pump the blood according to the needs of the body so while we are giving drug digox uh, drugs like digoxin to a patient this will increase the force of contraction of their heart without increasing the oxygen demand without increasing the oxygen demand they will uh, they are easily uh, capable of increasing the force of contraction so this is the main indication for the drug digoxin and how they act means we can explain by through the its mechanism so mechanism of action of digoxin so we can consider a cardiac myocyte here here is a pump is here sodium potassium pump is there this is sodium calcium exchanger this is a voltage gated calcium channel inside the cell this is sodium potassium voltage gated pump and this is sodium and calcium exchanger and this is l type voltage gated calcium channel inside the myocytes there is sarcoplasmic reticulum is there this is rio rhinodyne receptors this is our sarcoplasmic reticulum which consisting of calcium ions lots of this is actually act as a storage for calcium ions this is atp driven calcium channel so it will exchange so what is the main purpose of these two gate channel means they have to maintain the concentration gradient inside the cell and outside the cell so this is the plasma membrane from uh, there the voltage gated calcium channels and everything every channels are present okay when an action potential is come when an action potential is triggered this will allow the influx of calcium ions in inside the cells this is the purpose i am explaining the normal things first so the action potential occur the calcium ions entered into the cytosol that the intracellular membrane okay uh, before that uh, what is the purpose of this voltage gated channels means this will uh, allow the exchange of three sodium ions outside the cells and uh, simultaneously two potassium inside the cell they have to maintain the concentration gradient of sodium high outside the membrane and low inside the membrane like potassium high inside the membrane and low outside the membrane so excess of sodium is present means they will automatically changes to 
and uh, uh, if the concentration gradient, if the sodium concentration gradient is low in between means, they can exchange through the sodium calcium pump by sodium coming like this, sodium will come inside and calcium will go outside. That is the purpose of sodium calcium exchanges. When an action potential comes, calcium ions comes inside the membrane. These calcium ions will bind to these rhyodine receptors. So, rhyodine receptors will, this will may induces the other calcium ions present in the sarcoplasmic reticula. So, the action potential came and it will uh, opens these L type calcium channels and calcium in come inside the cell and this will bind to rhyodine receptor and this will allow the release of calcium ions into the more calcium ions into the intracellular medium and this calcium we know that calcium is responsible for the force of contraction of muscles again heart calcium will make the heart contraction so uh, this calcium will bind to troponin myosin system and this tropomyosin system consisting of one thin actin filament is there and middle thick myosin filament is there. This is thin actin filament and this is thick myosin. What this calcium will do means calcium will bind to troponin myosin complex and makes the contraction. So these myosin filament, thick myosin filament will slide over the or glides over the thin actin filaments. So this is the normal mechanism. So for the patients with consistent heart failure, this contraction or action potential is slow. So they can't even pump uh, more calcium as usual. So uh, we have given this digoxin drug digoxin drug to the patient what this digoxin will this will digoxin will block the action of this sodium potassium atps so thereby the entrance of sodium uh, sorry the exchange of sodium will not occur sodium will not go outside the cell and potassium will not come inside the cell so the intracellular sodium concentration will get up so intracellular sodium is increased because of that this eventually the sodium calcium exchanger also eventually stop working because they have to maintain the concentration gradient both inside and both outside the cell if this pump get stop working the intercellular sodium is increased so eventually sodium will not come from outside the cell this exchanger will uh, allow the in allow the uh, influx of sodium outside the membrane so actually sodium is also uh, already increased the cell so this pump also stop working so when an action potential came if this uh, also stop working means calcium efflux calcium efflux also efflux means outside from inside to outside efflux also not happen so when an action potential came in this uh, after the administration of digoxin so calcium came to the cytosol what the next step this this will binds to the rhinodine receptor in order because the calcium efflux is not happen the presence of calcium ions is more in this intracellular medium so more number of what more number of calcium ions will bind to the rhinodine receptor and this uh, excess of calcium is go back to the cytosol so an enormous number of calciums because the calcium efflux route is stopped by and this uh, excess of calcium can be go back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum when an action potential came this will bind to rhinodine receptor rhinodine receptors and uh, enormous number of or more amount of calcium is present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, after the absorption of calcium to the rhinodine receptor more number of calcium is uh, triggered outside the trigger to the cytosol so more number of calcium that means high force of contraction is increased force of contraction occurs so this is the mechanism of action of digoxin so uh, this is the uh, mechanism of action Di thereby without the use of more oxygen they are just making the uh, making force of contraction increment now uh, this is over with
mechanism of action. Now we can go to it. We have already discussed about its indications because uh, it is used mainly in congestive heart failure and arrhythmias. Now when going to its adverse effects, adverse effects is first main adverse effect is digoxin toxicity. Because of the therapeutic index of this drug is very low. Therapeutic index means uh, the distance between distance between the therapeutic range therapeutic range and toxic level. Because of the distance between therapeutic range and toxic level is very low, digoxin will uh, cause digoxin toxicity. What is digoxin toxicity mainly, uh, what is the antidote for digoxin toxicity means if we are giving more potassium hmm, uh, by blockage of the sodium potassium pump, they can't exchange sodium and potassium. So potassium level will be intracellular potassium level will get low. So when we introduce more potassium, we give the potassium, it will uh, competitively bind the sodium potassium gated gated uh, gate and thereby uh, it will easily remove the digoxin from the site. First one is digoxin toxicity is the main adverse effects then come to the uh, side effects of digoxin. Side effects is first one anorexia, anorexia will be there this is due to the GIT will uh, irritated by the digoxin. This is mainly due to GIT irritation. The patient will get anorexia. Then uh, nausea and vomiting is there. This is mainly because these at high doses digoxin can trigger the CTZ or stimulate the CTZ zone. Chemoreceptor trigger zone it will stimulate. Digoxin will stimulate. Then abdominal pain will be there. This is because of mesenteric vasoconstriction. So this is the uh, common, commonly happening side effects of digoxin, anorexia, nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain. Apart from this fatigue is also there, malaise will be there, malaise means muscle pain and these all are the other uh, side effects of digoxin. So I think you people are clear with this drug detoxing. So I am winding up the session. Thank you.